Okay, this is problem number 132. It's in chapter 11, and I'll read it first of all. It's on page 491. From measurements of a photograph, it has been found uh, that as the stream of water shown left uh, the nozzle at A, it had a radius of curvature of 25 meters. Uh, determine A, the initial velocity VA of the stream, and B, the radius of curvature of the stream at its maximum height. Okay? So let me copy down the figure. So here's the nozzle. The stream comes out of the nozzle and has a ratio of 4 to 3, so obviously they're going to make us use a, a 4 3 triangle. This is point. A. We're supposed to find, let's see, so this is essentially the given, we're supposed to find the velocity at A, and we're supposed to find the radius of curvature at B, where B is at the maximum point of the stream. Okay? Now what we were told is that the radius of curvature at this particular point is 25 feet. So at A, essentially, the radius of curvature of this path is 25 feet. But at B, it's not necessary that the radius of curvature would be 25 feet, right? Because think about it. This would be following a parabolic curve, not a circular curve. Okay. Yes? Meters. This one's in meters. This one's in meters. Great. <laughs> well, for some reason, I have feet in, the, in my notes. So I must have worked it in feet. When it's actually in meters. Okay, so I'll have to change my notes a bit. The number should be right. Uh, no, the number is not right. I might need a calculator help on this. Okay, so uh, the radius of curvature is 25 meters. And what we'd like to find out initially is the velocity at A. And you might look at this and be a little bit confused and wonder, well, how on earth is the velocity at A related to this radius of curvature thing. It's actually not all that complicated. It's just a matter of thinking. As soon as the particle leaves the nozzle, what is, what is its acceleration? What do you think? It's not zero. It's g, right? In this direction. Or if we're going to take a xy coordinate system as we usually do, then it's negative g in the y direction. So that's the acceleration. If we know the acceleration, let me change the colors, if we know the acceleration is g in this direction, well, what does that tell you about the normal acceleration? Because there would be a normal acceleration, right? The normal acceleration would be a component of g. See how this would have to be the normal acceleration? And this piece back here in the tangential direction, a sub t, would show you that the velocity overall is decreasing, right? Because g, the acceleration of gravity, is pulling away from velocity. Now, that might be confusing because one other fact that you know is true is that the x component of this velocity is constant. But that actually makes sense because, look, g only acts in the y direction, so the x component has to be constant. So once again, it would be valuable to calculate the x component of the velocity. So let's just go ahead and do that. VAX, okay, help me out here. How would I calculate VAX based on VA? What would you do? Move out of your way. Uh, three fifths of VA. Three fifths, that's right. Just notice that you've got a triangle here, no, right? X would be the hypotenuse. Yeah, uh, yeah it's the X, yeah, you're right. You were on the right track, so I went ahead and said you were. Okay, the, the five length, uh, or the, the unit five length, would be uh, analogous to the velocity uh, that's coming out at A. Now we're interested in the x direction component, and so it's four fifths of the velocity at A. Okay? So when I calculated that, I did it in uh, feet per second, uh, but my numbers should come out the same. Uh, just, just the units are different. Let's see. So the velocity in the x direction should come out to about 20.30 meters per second. Okay? 
When did you get up on this I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. I haven't got the velocity today yet. Let me try that next. Hang on. Hold that thought. I'm sorry. How are we going to get the velocity at A? Well, here's the key. You know that the velocity at A is just the tangential velocity, right? And so if you take the square of that tangential velocity divided by the radius at A, you should get the normal acceleration, right? Because that's just how the tangential velocity relates to the normal acceleration. But you also know that the normal acceleration is just a component of G, right? So now here comes the tricky part. We have to somehow figure out the magnitude of this normal acceleration based on G and the fact that we essentially have another 4, 3, 5 triangle. Now my drawing's not good enough for us to really figure out, just from the drawing, <clears throat> which side is the 4 and which side is the 3 side. So let me start off by extracting that triangle. Uh, since I'm working over here, I'll just pull it off over here. So here is G. We know G is going to be the 5 side, right? And we know we've got a line like this and a line like this. But which side is 3 and which side is 4? How do we figure that out? Well, the way to figure it out is by looking at, you can't just look at the, the square angle here and assume that's the same, right? Because it could flip, it could be either way. So what you have to do is look at uh, lines that are uh, related to each other. So we have to somehow relate this line to one of these lines and this line to one of the lines. So how should we do that? Any ideas? What do you think? Well, go ahead and get it to you. It turns out that this is the 4 side and this is the 3 side. Now, how would we know that? How would we know that that's the way it is? Well, one way we could do it is by being more careful with, my draw with your drawing. I wasn't very careful and I made this line uh, uh, too large of an angle, right? There's not a 90 degree angle here. So had I brought it down, you would see that this length would expand and this one would shrink. Okay? So sometimes you can tell from the drawing if you're careful. But what I notice is a lot of students don't do that. They're not real careful, and so they end up making mistakes here. So what else could we do? Well, notice that, let's see if we can figure this out. These two lines are perpendicular to each other, right? And so essentially, this line is perpendicular to the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse on one is perpendicular to this line. Well. What line is this hypotenuse perpendicular to? You can see it. It's right here. Does that make sense? So, basically what that tells me is that this line is like this line, and this line is like this line. And that's how this, this four length is put right here. Okay? That can be really confusing until you sit down and wrap your head around it. But I like this problem because it includes something that doesn't have an angle. If you wanted to make your life a little bit easier, what you could do is say, well, there's some angle theta in here. And you can use that angle to figure out that the angle theta is also right here. How could you do that? Well, you know that this is a 90 degree angle. Therefore, this angle here is part of the 90 degree angle, and it's the same as this angle over here. If that makes sense, great. If not, uh, hopefully you can rewind the video and look at it because we're running out of time to, to capture the video. All right, so anyway, the point is that the normal acceleration will be equal to what? Let's see, it would be four-fifths of G, right? Because of the geometry. Can I erase this triangle? Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So, to calculate VA, all I would have to do is rearrange the equation and say, well, let's see, multiply rho on the other side, take the square root, doing all the math quickly, 4 fifths, G rho A should be the velocity today. Now, this is where I need some calculator help, because like I said, I plugged in G in uh, units of, uh, or units, so it's 32.2 feet per second squared. Anyway, VA is the square root of 4 fifths. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the radius of curvature at A we were given is 25 meters. So a couple people, please plug that in your calculators. Let's see what we come up with. And see what we've got. 
Okay. And then that means that this number is going to be wrong because it involves VA, which depends on G. You got a 14.01. And the units would be meters per second. Okay, anyone second that? Okay, good. So let's take 14.01 uh, meters per second, multiply it by 4 fifths, and now what, we, what do we get for the velocity uh, at A in the x direction? How much? 11.21. Okay, thank you. 11.21 meters per second. All right, so there is a velocity in the x direction. Why did we need that? Well, this is one of our answers, but we're going to use the same trick at B. Because at B, we know now that the velocity is just VAX, which is 11.21 apparently. And now we'd just like to find the radius of curvature. Well, how do we find the radius of curvature? Well, here's the trick. The normal acceleration is just equal to g, right? Has to be, because it's at the top of the curve. So, what do we do? Well, we do something very similar here. Basically, we just say that the velocity ax squared over rho b is equal to the normal acceleration, which is just g. Notice I'm not particularly concerned with the sign, because I'm really using more of a normal tangential coordinate system than a Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. All right, so the velocity, or what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature at B would be, you know what, let me move that down to the next slide for the video. So the radius of curvature at B would be equal to VAX squared divided by G. Okay. So let's plug in the numbers, see what we've got, and then we'll be done. So 14.01 meters per second quantity squared divided by 9.81 meters per second squared. And what do we have? Is that the 11.21 velocity? Sorry? Oh, you're right. Thank you. I plugged in the wrong number. 11.21 meters per second. Thanks. What do you have? 12.81. Like I said, I'll fix my example problem and, and upload it so that you've got it. Um, but uh, that should be it. So the trick that we use is just figuring out the relationship between the normal acceleration and the thing that causes it, which is acceleration of gravity. Okay? Thank you, guys.